So this was going to be a story about silly bugs that repeat a process over and over. But it turned into a story about silly humans that repeat a story over and over, because it turns out the original story that I learned about and read about is not true! There's a great story in cognitive science about the Sphex wasp, and how you can prank it forever. These wasps store food in little burrows underground, and every time they bring food over, they do a three-step process. Leave the food at the entrance, enter the nest to inspect it, and then bring the food in. But the prank you can pull on the wasp is that when it's inside the nest, you can pick up the food and move it a few inches to the side. When the wasp comes out, it's gonna take the food, and then leave it at the entrance and inspect its nest again, even though it just did that. The theory is that the wasp has no memory or concept of what's going on. It only knows its three-step process. So if you interrupt it, the only thing it can do is start again, and again, and again. One scientist even said they were able to repeat this 40 times. So this is a story about the simple, almost mechanical behaviors of insects. Basically, bugs are easy to prank. Douglas Hofstadter and Daniel Dennett and so many others have retold this story. And I was about to also, but I had one question. What's the source? And I found out Fred Kaiser had the same question I did, because he wrote an incredible paper that dug up all the receipts on this story. So here's what happened. So Hofstadter and Dennett have told this story in all of these places, at least. And all of these people have retold their stories. And the thing is, Hofstadter and Dennett both cite one source. Wooldridge, who is not a biologist, and did not do this experiment. Wooldridge just retells a story from a textbook called The Science of Life, which, yes, by the way, is by That Wells and also the brother of That Huxley. Wasn't expecting those cameos. The textbook cites two sources. The first source is Faber, who finally seems to be the origin of the story. And he says, yeah, I fooled a wasp 40 times, but there were some other wasps that I couldn't fool. The second source were the Peckhams, who were like, yeah, the wasps just kind of wised up after a while. So let's recap. Faber tells a story where he fools some wasps, the Peckhams find evidence against that, Wells responsibly cites both of them, then Wooldridge cites Wells and ignores all of that contradictory evidence to tell this super simple story, then Hofstadter and Dennett retell that story, then I hear that story, I don't do any additional research, and then you hear about it! So instead of telling stories of stories, let's talk about real research. Jane Brockman did a five-year study on Sphex wasps. Part of that work was recreating Faber's prank experiment, and she found 12 wasps got repeatedly pranked, 10 just brought the food in after a few times, and 9 gave up or messed up in some way. Which is a very different story! Brockman's argument is that these wasps are pretty adaptive and nuanced. And she also points out that going into the nest every time might not be so silly because it makes it easier to pull food in! So who's really getting fooled here? The wasps or all of us? Anyway, always dig into your sources. There's bound to be drama and some interesting stories.